All right, so question of the week is about anime live action adaptations and what we think about them. And I guess let's let's hit that part of it first. I, I actually don't have too much to say about live action adaptations of anime because I haven't really seen any uh, other than the Japanese Dragon Ball movie that was made like back in the mid '90s, I think, on a budget of about three cents, <laughs> um, and 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 looks just pretty bad and has has some pretty oddball acting and. I mean, it's it's fun for a bad movie, and I, I I don't really hate it, but I think it's just terrible. I really don't have too much of a problem with live action adaptations, but that's partly because I don't really care about adaptations. I think if you want to ad adapt something, fine, go ahead. I'm not going to try to compare it precisely to the original material because it is a different thing. I don't know. I, I I can't get too worked up over them one way or the other. Yeah, that's same thing here. I mean, it's. A lot of people talk about how they have problems with adaptations for this reason or that reason, but and and one thing I will talk about is that I almost wish they don't look anything like the anime. Yeah, agreed. Because live action cinema is totally different mm. from animation and yeah. we can argue about which one's superior and I don't think yeah. there's really an answer to that, but you have to also the reimagining of the show is also a key part. Yeah, in terms of marketability and in terms of just what you want to make out of it, because I, I think that Bebop would probably be turned into a really noir show. Oh, absolutely. Or into or a movie rather. Yeah. Uh, and it probably you know the show I don't think is very noirish at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's the direction you have to take for the movie because you have to have some you know, feel to it. Yeah, or something. I mean, it, it's like when they're. Some people do this for well. I, the Dark Knight actually comes to mind. Yeah. Uh, in terms of you know, same thing, mm -hmm. almost exact same thing in terms of yeah. This this feels like noir. Okay, let's let's do that. <laughs> and comic book adaptations are actually a really good example. The Dark Knight, from what I've seen, does not look like a comic book. It certainly takes from things like Arkham Asylum, for example, which I've read, even Dark Knight Returns, but it's not, not like a comic book and that's great because you don't want to try to mimic a comic book on screen it just doesn't look the same yeah and while anime does that religiously with its manga adaptations making up the bulk of its series and stuff like that i don't think that that's a very good idea because who cares i mean <laughs> well I, I think a good example is looking at how those adaptations are done i mean you, you compare lucky star for example to the manga, and it's quite different. You know, they've definitely gone in different directions. They're, they're, they got a lot of the same jokes and so forth, but they stretch them out, they compress them, they use them in different ways. Azamanga Daio is another great example, where a four-coma manga is <laughs> not what the anime is, and even though it covers a lot of the same ground. And I, I think that's how you be successful, is you take that thing and say, okay, how do we make a good anime out of this? Not, how do we take this and try to copy it as slavishly as possible in this new medium. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I don't think I was as specific as I intended to be. I, I meant the people who complain about the adaptation not being exactly like the source material. Yeah, okay, yeah. And I really have a problem with that because, you know, the manga is the manga. It tells that story. I right. don't need to watch moving manga of the same thing. <laughs> exactly. It's nice to have dis you know differences between various different aspects and mediums of this story or whatever. Right. And so I, I think that's the key thing. I mean, that's and some people will argue, as this uh, the video we're responding to argues that that's what people are fans of when they you know people are fans of the original Dragon Ball story. They don't want uh, some reimagining or something like that. They want the Dragon Ball story with better quality and everything like that. And while some people may want that personally, I don't really desire to see, you know, 16 more cells added. I don't know where he gets the authority to say that that's what people want, frankly. I don't want that. Some people do. Some people do, certainly. But I, I, I don't think you can say that that's what you know, X percent of fans want, or the majority of fans want. I certainly, it, to me it's kind of like saying that 
you know, people who are fans of the first book in a, in, in a series want the second one to be exactly the same. I don't. You know, I want it to, to follow logically in some reasonable way, but if it goes in a different direction, cool, that's fun. Uh, there's actually a series of Russian novels that explicitly does that. Every single one is a different genre and feel. And I think that's great. If, if it's different, I think, I, I would hope fans are mature enough to be able to accept that. Yeah, or accept that they don't like it or whatever. Right, yeah. And, and that's perfectly logical and reasonable if you say, okay, this is an adaptation. I just don't like these things they did with it, you know, because I don't think that works as a movie or what have you. Fine, that's, that's perfectly reasonable. But I, I don't think that you can reasonably say that everyone wants a, a precise adaptation when that doesn't even, that can't even be. That's true, because the difference of mediums, yeah. Right. But I think we can all say that anime hasn't quite gotten a great live-action adaptation, at least from me speaking. I've seen the cashier in live-action film, and I've, I've, I've read enough that I know I don't want to go see the Speed Racer movie. Well, although I've heard that both uh, Death Note and Nana are, are excellent. Yeah, I'm I'm interested in the Death Note movie. Yeah, the the reviews I've seen of Nana are like, wow, this is a fantastic film. Who knows? So hard to tell. Uh, and and like you say, I think it's one of those things where it needs to be to be its own thing. Um, I was gonna say actually, I I, I completely missed this um, Boogie Pop and others, mm. uh, where that actually is a pretty straight adaptation of the original Boogie Pop novel, but they got the original writer to write the screenplay and basically say, okay, turn this into a, um, into a screenplay. And I think, and it, it's not the book. They leave out one major character. They switch things around and it's, it's a definitely a different experience than reading that book. And I think it absolutely benefits from that. Yeah. And what about things like, I know this is sort of getting off the topic of live action anyway, where uh, Gunbuster the movie, Die Buster the movie, the mm -hmm. Gundam movies. Yeah. I mean, where where do you see those? Do we let those off easy or? Yeah, good point. I mean, were were they simply created to make money because mm. they are literally, you know, footage cut from the original practically. I've mm -hmm. I've heard that there's little or nothing really of original. It's mostly original footage. There's almost no new footage. Right. So. It feels like they're making it's it's just to make money off of. I can understand as a fan of some of these things wanting to have a Gunbuster and Diebuster. The movie are the only things available on Blu-ray over here. Mm. I don't know that the original series is over or the OVA in Japan is available in Blu-ray or not. Mm. But over here, the only things you can buy in Blu-ray are the movies of Gunbuster, Diebuster, and the Gatai movie. Uh, so I bought the Gunbuster movie because I like having an hour Gunbuster in an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is just nice and fun and allows you to more easily show it to people anyway. Yeah. And that's another interesting point is that, especially with those things, the movies are intended as a distillation of this into a slightly different format. Yeah. I, I'm still not sure that we should let them off easy, that you know they should even exist. Oh, I, I definitely like the idea. Razafon's a good example. I think that's something that absolutely would benefit and did benefit from a movie version. Because it, it goes out there, it, it gets it into a different venue, and it allows people who wouldn't necessarily have caught it on TV, you see, oh, there's this big, nicely done, edited together, hour and a half version of this I can go out and see. Cool. Hmm. Yeah, to some degree I can see that, but I don't know. I, I guess I just see the same people going to see the movie to see what was added or not added. Okay. And that that's mostly what I see out of the movies. Hmm. Especially for things like original Gundam and things like that. Or heck, Miller's Report for 8th and mm -hmm. S team. Mm -hmm. Where it's, you know... And, and there's a little bit more to that. Yeah. But, I don't know, it, it's nice to have, but at the same time, was it really worth mm. doing all of that for... I, I don't know, it, it's, a, it's a balancing act. Yeah, definitely agreed there. Alright, well, I, I think we made our point. Yeah. Cool.